Hello everyone, my name is Kimberly Grimmer, and today we'll be talking about functions, homomorphisms, and isomorphisms. Our goal is to first review functions, since we'll be meeting that along our journey. Then we want to introduce homomorphisms of groups, and also isomorphisms, and how we can determine whether two groups are isomorphic or not. Eventually, we will prove the composition of two homomorphisms is a homomorphism, and eventually extend our group homomorphisms to ring homomorphisms. So let's get started. First, we want to review functions. So a function is a rule or set of rules that translates every element of some set A into an element of another set B. A specific type of function is an onto function, which is a function such that every element of B is mapped by some element in A. So let's go over um, a little bit of a picture so you can see this better. So if we look at the picture on the left here, we can see that this is an onto function from A to B. And we can see that every element in B is mapped to by some element of A. And then we can see a counterexample of what a not onto function would look like. And this is where there's multiple elements in B that are not mapped by some element of A, and therefore this function is not onto. The next type of functions we're going to be concerned with are one-to-one -one functions. And this is a function such that no element in B is mapped by more than one element of A. So if we look in this picture, we can see that our function is from A to B, and that every element in B is mapped to by one element of A. And lastly, we want to define what a bijective function is, and this is a function that is both one-to-one -one and onto. So now we're ready to deal with homomorphisms. So a homomorphism is if we have a group G under multiple under the operation dot, we'll say, and H under the operation star, and these are both groups, then a function G to H is a homomorphism if f of x dot y equals f of x star f of y for all x and y in G. Now this is a little hard to understand at first, so let's go through a couple examples and see if we can get a better hold on it. Our first example will have our function from the real numbers under addition to the positive real numbers under multiplication be our function such that f of x equals e to the x. And our goal is to show that f is a homomorphism. So we want to show that f of x plus y is equal to f of x times f of y. Right, because that's the way we'll be able to show if it's a homomorphism or not. So we can plug in, so we have e to the x plus y when we plug in our x and y into the function on the left, and we're left with e to the x times e to the y on the right. And by properties of exponents, these are in fact equal. And so we can say that f is a homomorphism. Now let's try a non-example so we can see what a homomorphism wouldn't be. So we can let f from the integers under addition to the real numbers under multiplication where the function is f of x equals x plus 1. And let's just recall that f of x plus y is equal to f of x times f of y. That's what we need in order for it to be a homomorphism. So to prove a non-example, we only need one example that doesn't work. So if we have f of 1 plus 2, which will give us f of 3, and when we plug 3 into our function x plus 1, we get f of 3 equals 4. But when we plug in f of 1 into f of x, we get 2, and when we plug 2 into f of x, we get 3, and 2 times 3 is 6. And therefore, 4 and 6 are not equal, so we do not have a homomorphism in this case. So let's try one more example just to make sure we all have this down before we move on. So now we're going to say that phi um, is z12 to z24, where phi of a mod 12 is equal to 2a mod 24. So we start with phi of a mod 12 plus b mod 12, and we can rewrite that as phi of a plus b mod 12 by modular addition. And then since our function is 2a mod 24. We can rewrite that as 2 times a plus b mod 24. 
Then we can just distribute our 2, so we get 2a plus 2b mod 24. We can rewrite this again as 2a mod 24 plus 2b mod 24 by our modular addition. And lastly, we can almost go in reverse here and see that 2a mod 24 can be re rewritten as phi of a mod 12 because of the function that was defined. So we have phi of a mod 12 plus 5b mod 12 under mod 24. And therefore, we can show that this is, in fact, a homomorphism. So now we're going to look at isomorphisms, which is a bijective homomorphism. So if we let g um, under the operation addition and h under the operation star both be groups, then and we also need it to be bijective, which means that their function is one to one and onto. Then our homomorphism also needs to be true, so we'd have f of x plus y equals f of x star f of y for all x and y and g. So if g under addition, if the group g under addition is isomorphic to the group h under multiplication, then we'll write g is isomorphic to h denoted by this symbol here. So by now you're probably wondering, how are we supposed to show something's a homomorphism or isomorphism? So, I decided to kind of lay it out for you. So our first thing we want to do is find a mapping between the two groups. Then we need to sh prove that the mapping preserves our operations. And lastly, we need to show for an isomorphism that our function is, in fact, one-to-one -one and onto. So let's do an example of this. We have z6 under addition to z7 minus 0 under multiplication. And our function is f of x equals 3 to the x. So when we look here, we can see that x, we've listed our input, which is z6, so we get 0 through 5, and our output, which is when we plug in those x's into the function. So when we plug in 0 for x, we get 3 to the 0, which is 1. Um, mod 7 is still 1. And then we have 3 to the 1, which gives us 3. 3 squared, which is 9, mod 7 is 2. So that's where we get our 2 going to 2 here. And then we have 3 to the 3rd is 27, mod 7, which is 6, is what we have here. And then our last one's 4 and 5. So just so you know, we can get a better feel for this, understand where elements are going, where they're supposed to go. So now if we take any two elements, A and B, and we're doing this one a little bit backwards, but we'd have f of a times f of b, which we can rewrite as 3a times 3b, which is equal to 3a plus b, right, by properties of exponents again. And that we can rewrite as f of a plus b, based on our function. So then, our last thing we need to check in order for it to be an isomorphism is, is it one-to-one -one and onto? So we have every element is mapped to, and no element is mapped to by more than one element. So we do have one to one and onto, and therefore we have a nice one. So next, we're going to get a little bit more technical. And here we want to show that the composition of two homomorphisms is a homomorphism. So try to stay with me here. So now we want to show our proof that the composition of two homomorphisms is a homomorphism. So we'll start and we'll let G, H, and K all be groups. And we'll let phi be the function from G to H and psi be the function from H to K. And we'll let both phi and psi be homomorphisms. And then we must show that psi of phi is a homomorphism. So our end goal is to show that this composition of two homomorphisms is a homomorphism. So we're going to let x and y be elements of g. And then we can say that psi of phi of x times y equals psi of phi of x times y, where x times y is happening in g, which is why it's denoted in red. And we can simply rewrite it this way because of composition notation. And then we can say that this is equal to psi of phi of x times phi of y, where phi of x times phi of y is in h, which is why it's denoted in blue. And we can say this because phi is operation preserving since it's a homomorphism. 
and then we can say that psi of phi of x times psi of phi of y is in k, and this is true because psi is also operation preserving since it is also a homomorphism. And lastly, we can say that this is equal to psi of phi of x times psi of phi of y, and this is just by our composition notation that we can rewrite it this way. And thus we get that psi of phi is a homomorphism. So next, we want to talk about the fact that the composition of two isomorphisms is an isomorphism. And for time's sake, this follows pretty much from the proof of the composition of two homomorphisms is a homomorphism, and then just adding in that the composition of bijective functions is bijective. So very similar, and following from that. So lastly, we want to talk about automorphisms. And an automorphism is an isomorphism from a group G to G itself, so that the operation keeps the elements in the same group. So an example would be the integers under addition to the integers under addition. And our function could be f of x is x, and that would be an example of an automorphism. So lastly, we want to go over ring homomorphisms. And this is a mapping that preserves the two ring operations. So we'll let r under addition and multiplication and s under addition and multiplication both be rings such that our function goes from r to s. And in order for this to be a homomorphism, we must show that our both operations are operation preserving. So we would have f of q plus r, so say two elements in r, um, is equal to f of q plus f of r in, under um, addition in s. And we'd also, also have to say that f of q times r in r is equal to f of q times f of r in under the multiplication of s. So that's just how we would relate this and have to take this a step further, is checking our separate second operations then. So thank you. I hope you had a nice time listening.